I've been abridged. A young troll stands in his respite block. It just so happens that today, the 12th by Luna perigee of the 6th Dark Seasons Equinox is this young troll's wriggling day. What will the name of this young Jutanagorist be? Answer name. Shouty McNubhorns! Ugh, that was just... so uncreative. If that's the best you've got, I'll just have to take over from- Oh, god damn it. He just broke our box. Unfortunately, as that was the only text box we had left, it appears as though introductions will have to be cut short from this point forward. Whatever. Apparently, he's called Kark Advances. This is his room. That's his bed full of drugs to suppress his madness and bloodless within. Those are his shitty romantic comedy movie posters that are only special because they have the word troll in front of all the actors' names. His ambition is to be both Heckerman and Thresh Prince of Alternia. But he's really just a chump. He also has a severe inferiority complex regarding his size, horns, and, well, we'll get to that. Now, let's move on. Before we can, however, it appears as though our new nubby-horned friend has received a message from a resident stoner. Carcap, answer the stoner. Man, have you ever thought about motherfucking miracles? No! Despite you mentioning them every other fucking sentence, that train of thought has completely slipped my mind. Aww, then I need to all up and motherfucking educate you and shit. Fuck no! Honk. Carcap, be the stoner. You unwillingly decide to be the resident juggalo stoner. Gamzi Makara. Despite his getup, he's never heard of the insane clown posse. Somehow. His guardian is a sea goat who gave him abandonment issues. He has 99 problems and a unicycle is one. Not to mention the fact that he actually uses his drug bed outside of sleeping. The average troll cannot withstand a single serving of the soporific slime their Recuperacoon contains before succumbing to an unhealthy high that lasts indefinitely. If that troll were to ever come off that high, the consequences would be... unfortunate. And speaking of misfortune, it appears as though McNubhorns is being trolled by a fellow that is significantly better at hacking than him. Carcat, answer hacker friend. I'm in. What? I'm in, KK. The fuck are you blabbering on about now? You wouldn't understand. You'd have to be good with computers to get that joke. Fuck you! I'm great with computers. KK, you are literally bashing your head on the keyboard right now. Am not! Fuck! You just smashed your forehead again, didn't you? Mm. Sh shut up! I rest my cape. F fuck you, I'm better at hacking! Haha, <laughs> sore. Bet you can't hack this file then. I'll fucking do it! No, you won't. Fucking watch me do this shit! <laughs> All according to Kekaku. Translators know Kekaku equals plan. I'll never understand this weird dweeb shit you spew in these chats. I don't expect you to, you fucking normie. Oh, wow. I cannot believe I just read that. I can't believe I just typed that. This has to be the worst conversation we've ever had. Honestly, yeah. We should start playing that game or whatever. Yeah, you want to be the red team leader? Sure. Fuck. This really was a huge waste of time. I vote we just delete all this shit and pretend it never happened. Yeah, we really need to work on not being complete shit sacks. Agreed. God, that was stupid. We really need a break after that one. Allow us to subvert the fledgling pattern we established and instead go to the next troll on our list of new characters to care about. Hopefully she'll somehow be less disappointing, though I sincerely doubt it. Terezi Pyrope, the Phoenix Wright scented troll. However, unlike Phoenix Wright, she takes the law into her own hands. Like Phoenix Wright, she enjoys tricking people into their own deaths, straight up executing her scaly plushies, and long walks on the beach. She's also blind. Did I mention she's blind? Yep, she's legally blind. Remember? Don't worry. She will tell you. 
Before you say anything, just remember that I am blind and cannot read anything you type. Shit, I forgot. Finally, someone understands. Anyway, I'm bored. You wanna play gamesies with me? Get it? It's like I'm saying your name, but instead I'm saying something actually cool. <laughs> Man, that's a good one, sis. <laughs> you always appreciate my genius. Motherfuck, yeah. Alright, let me get my shit together. Wait, hold up a motherfucking second. I'm playing a game with Carcat. That's the game I'm talking about, stupid. I'm connecting to Carcat, so you need to connect to me. Ah, oh, Man, that's why you're the brains behind this duo. For the record, we are not a duo, nor will we ever be. Don't ever get that thought into your head again. Honk. Moving right along, we find ourselves in the presence of a character that is currently too spoopy for an introduction. Instead, we decide to pretend that she doesn't exist and move on to everyone's favorite loser. The physical embodiment of overcompensation. Tavros Nitrum, the top heavy troll. He likes to roleplay, therefore we will discuss him in such context. While his friendliness and pushover stats are really high, his self-confidence and walking stats are non-existent. This is because of his Tormented by Spider Bitch debuff, which reduces any semblance of confidence along with any traits that directly connect to it. Speaking of confidence, the best troll makes her presence brief through the trolling of the pathetic pupa. Tavros, answer Spider Bitch. Tavros! Ah. Uh. Are you ready to die? What? Why, you and your puny red team, of course! Oh, uh, that game TA told me about. It involves death? I'm not saying it will. But if you insist on continuing to be a little wimpy bitch, you might cause it to. Uh, I don't think I want to listen to your threats. GA warned me about doing that. Uh, that specifically. Fuzzy Fangs won't be able to save you, Tavros. Not when I come after you. Watch yourself. Uh, I'm gonna block you again, so, uh, please stop making me unblock you and making me punch myself. It, uh, doesn't really make me stronger. It just hurts. No promises. Now that we have warmed ourselves up with Spider Bitch, we can finally talk about the spoopiest troll in town. Aradia Megiddo. She is a necrophiliac. Okay, she actually isn't. You believed it for a second, though. What's more, she likes breaking things. A lot. That's... not all. In fact, once upon a time, she wasn't spoopy. Then she had a sudden case of instant death. However, our new dead friend is too preoccupied talking to the living lesbian troll to pay attention to us. Not that she has access to that level of awareness anyways. Or does she? No, she probably doesn't. I hope so. Aradia? What? Would you mind if I asked you to not kill anyone in this game? Yes, I would mind. Oh. Okay. Well, I still feel it necessary to ask that you refrain from any killing. No. Seriously? I said that I would mind, not that I would necessarily do it. Why do you always make this so difficult? Can't you see that I'm just trying to help you? I don't have pupils. What? That was a joke. About how I don't have pupils, because I'm dead. Oh. Solix told me to work on my humor. I think you might want to work a little more on that, along with everything else that is seriously wrong with you. Okay. Rather than take the next logical step and follow the lesbian on her wacky garden adventures, we instead decide to follow everyone's second favorite loser, 3D Glasses Troll. Solix Captor, better known by his hacker name, XX Twin underscore Armageddon's XX. Or just Twin Armageddon's if you're not a fucking loser. This bipolar fuckwit likes bees. And coding. And red and blue. What he does not like is himself. That is his character. Expect him to be killed off swiftly. Speaking of swift deaths... Is the game ready? Yes, obviously. I finished it hours ago. Would you really expect anything less? 
Zaxx, Twin Armageddon Zaxx always has his shit in check. Ha 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 ha. 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 Oh. That wasn't a joke, was it? You really need to work on your sense of humor. That can wait. For now, set up the game. It is imperative for you to do so. Ugh, fine, I get it. Fate of the universe and all, blah, blah, blah. Without breaking a sweat, we find ourselves in the cave of everyone's favorite autistic cat girl, Nepeta Legion. This Neko Furry Troll amalgamation is the result of something known as shipping. Shipping is evil and should stop this instant, you freaks! I mean... <clears throat> Trolls have four different types of romance. Kismisitude, the quad of hate fuckers. Auspistus, the let's calm the fuck down guys quadrant. Matesbrit ships, the closest thing to human romance. Wait, what are humans? And Moira Legions, BFF Le. B. B. BF. BI. Biff. Bifflers. Bifflies? Biffles? Biffles for life. How the fuck? <clears throat> And Moira Allegiance, Biffles for Life. No Peta, Troll Moirail. The apex predator slowly stalks her prey through the jungle. Her fur is stained in the blood of her victims and her fangs crave for even more carnage. No Peta, do I have to file yet another restraining order on your role-playing character? She then pounces upon the unsuspecting game, delivering the final blow. I'll take that as a yes. Aw, you're no fun! Can't you loosen up and let yourself purr a bit sometimes? I refuse to make any noises that are even remotely related to that of purr beasts. But purr beasts are the purr best! Never repeat that phrase ever again. I forbid it. Ah. We now find ourselves to be the best troll. This troll is so amazing that I don't even need to go into detail on her. I only need to say her name and allow the overwhelming awe that comes with it to take the place of the actual character development. Briska, Circuit. Okay, we're done here. Next up on the chopping block is the freak of nature, Equius the Hack. His strongness is maximum. He has a variety of interests, including towels, sweat, muscle beasts, robots, and sucking off his centaur butler. Speaking of which, breakfast time. Breakfast was several hours ago, Arthur! After cleaning himself up, our poor excuse for a character hits up his favorite disappointment for his daily flirt with defiling the troll blood color cast system, known as the Hemospectrum. This is your daily reminder that I consider you to be unfit for your blood color. Yep, you're right, dog. Oh my god, you're so lewd. Please dominate me. Oh, uh, what? Degrade me, high blood. Uh, I... You, uh... You low blood? Oh dear god, yes! Thank you, high blood. I think I will leave for now. I need a towel. Uh, sure thing, bro. <laughs> We proceed to avoid watching any more interaction between these two, so as to avoid this video getting taken down. Oh, look, it's Mommy's Little Girl's Wet Dream. AKA, we get to watch this young J-Blood pull a disgusting thing out of the guts of a creature lying down on the ground, said creature having been torn open with a chainsaw. Hot. Kanaya Mariam, the only troll with any semblance of a fashion sense, she likes gardening, makeup, random outfit changes for no apparent reason, and oh, look at that, physics defying chainsaws. You mean lipstick containers. No, wait, you mean chainsaws. She's also totally a mom. The mom, even. Even is a mom. Despite her aptitude for keeping other people's relationships from devolving into murder, her own chances at romance are about as imaginary as the rainbow drinker trolls of young adult fiction that she finds herself obsessed with. Speaking of an inability to function properly, it appears as though one of the two aquatic trolls is pestering our new meddlesome friend, Kanaya. Answer aquatic troll. Hi Kanaya! Hello. 
I believe I said hello. I would ask if I was mistaken, but my message is plainly visible, right above the one I previously sent. Hi! Kanaya! Please stop. Oh, but Kanaya! I'm excited! You're always excited. Fair enough, Glub. Whoops! I forgot to say what I was going to say. Hello again. Your Lucis is going to die. Unfortunately, I'm well aware. I'm currently harvesting her matriorb as we speak. Oh. Well, everyone's Lucis is dying, so I just thought I'd let you know. Have fun with the fisher and the creature that raised you. Okay. On to the sea witch troll. For fairy pay pi Pisces? Pixies? Pisces? Feffery P. This troll is always in a glubbing good mood, no matter how much you try and glub up her day. Her demeanor is marked by a glubbing excellent sense of humor, wit, and social competence, much unlike many of her friends, especially her Moirail. Aerodin Ampora, the racist troll. His personality is marked by his disdain for land-dwelling trolls, mainly because of their place on the hemo spectrum, lower than him. Not coincidentally, the only two people that can stand him are either the only blood color higher than his, or have an anonymous blood color. Uncanny, really. Hi, Erdan! Fef, why did I get stuck with such a shitty typing quirk? Didn't you pick it yourself? Don't patronize me, woman! We don't have to use our quirks if it really bothers you that much. No, but then if we don't have a quirk, how are people supposed to tell us apart? Well, we ain't exactly anything unique. Well, maybe if you spend more time interacting with people rather than focusing on how to refine that shitty quirk of yours, you wouldn't be such a bland loser. But what? I'm not bland, I have hobbies. You spend all of your time making doomsday devices, none of which ever work. I never said they were particularly good hobbies. Hmm. If you weren't such a sad excuse for a troll, then you could actually get people to like you! <laughs> but you like me, don't you, Fifth? And as long as I have you, then everything's alright. Right? Well... You then proceed to get your heart smashed to pieces by your ex, Moirail. Now that's hardly fair, wouldn't you say? What? Oh, come now. You've skipped more than half of the important parts. I'm here to take away your jar of paste and tiny scissors, little boy. Hey, I'm not a little kid. Just let me do my job, you absolute fucking walnut. Your job has already been fulfilled. Please, allow me to take the reins from here. No. You know how hard I worked to get this position? I beg your pardon. My request was merely a formality. You have no say in the matter. But my contract! <sighs> oh dear. It appears as though he's made quite a mess of this story. I suppose I'm not exactly an expert with brooms, but it appears as though I will also have to function as a janitor. Very well. Our story continues with the twelve trolls we've come to tolerate finally entering their game session. Of course, what they fail to realize, as they have such a sadly limited view of the world, is that theirs is only one of the earliest iterations in the veritable blockchain of universes to come. That's right! This is a prequel! How shocking! Well, shocking to anyone who may have skipped to this point in time. You know who you are. <laughs> Let's start off with the most important part we alluded to. Our dear troll Napoleon Complex's computer exploding. If you forgot, this was alluded to when his 3D spectacled friend sent him a mysterious code and challenged him to hack it. Little did both of them know that this single strand of symbols and digits was attached to yet another code, 
One written by a hacker with access to the very code of reality itself. Paradox Space. But that's a story for another time. You didn't come here to learn about boring hackers and their boring adventures. No, you came here for the trolls. And that is precisely what I intend on delivering. In due time, of course. We have plenty more engaging events to cover. Therefore, due time seems to be the proper time to dive into this. And of course, by due time I mean... Carcat? Answer Vriska! Carcat! No! Wow, and here I was coming to do you a favor. Vriska! The best favor you can do at this point is to just fuck off! Fine... But before I do, let me at least do you this solid. I have joined Aradius' team, so don't even waste your time trying to recruit me. Thank you, Vriska. Now I don't have to go through the headache of explaining that I have absolutely no interest in recruiting venomous scum like you onto my team. <gasps> Honestly, I don't even understand why you try to antagonize me at this point. You already pissed off everyone else. Mainly because you're a bitch who relies on using mind control powers and thinks she's clever for doing so. Everyone knows that's why you killed Aradia. You were just jealous of the fact that she can make actual friends without having to force them into it. So why don't you try doing what any other sane person would do in this scenario and actually fuck off for once? Mind control? Really? You're only proving my point! Why do you even bother? Oh, I'm sorry for offending you, Vriska. You are the best and most valued person I have ever met, and I love you and everything you do because you are amazing. Why, thank you, Carcat. Oh, for fuck's sake! I always knew you had a thing for the Scourge sisters. Me in particular. <laughs> this is the most pathetic- Yes, I do, Vriska. I am forever loyal to you and your amazing Mind Fang clan. Vriska is best girl. I'd fuck Vriska. Please fill buckets with me, Vriska. Wow! What the fuck? I... I don't even know what to say to you at this point. Uh, actually, that's it. I'm not even going to bother trying to insult you. No insult is sufficient enough for the burning trash heap you are. You're just a... Vriska. A thoughtless, cowardly Vriska. <laughs> Being a Vriska is a good thing, dumbass. Is it? Is it really? Is knowing every person you've ever known is either dead or hates your guts a good thing, you insufferable Vriska? <laughs> Carcat, this is a new level of pathetic. You would know pathetic, you Vriska! I'm laughing my ass off at you right now. The fact that you actually think this is going to get under my skin is just plain stupid. You would know stupid, wouldn't you? <laughs> sure. I guess I'll leave you be so you can come up with some better insults. Hit me up when you have something good. Later, Carcat. As can clearly be seen by anyone with eyes, eyeless omnipotent beings notwithstanding, our newly deemed best girl had a plan. One which was crafted weeks in advance. Generally speaking in Alternian society, Trolls in the upper echelon of the Hemo Spectrum often band together in order to seize control of anything and everything from their low-blooded neighbors. In the case of the Thief of Light, this desire for control would manifest itself into an alliance with the unlikeliest of acquaintances. Equius! Just how great are we? We are at nobility. Although, it should be noted that you are lesser than I. And likewise, my nobility is stronger than yours. Even if only by a little. Uh... There may not be an exceptional distance between our blood hues on the Hemo Spectrum, but it does exist. Equius, are you going to sit here raving about how your blood is better than mine, or are we going to get down to business? And no, not that kind of business. You prefer to fuck. I did nothing to imply that I thought of this business as something... Lude. Whatever. Is the present for Aradia ready? Yes, it is complete. Fantastic! Wait, you didn't make it a sex bot or anything, did you? I will neither confirm nor deny these accusations. You really are a freak, you know that? Anyway, just make sure to send it my way. No sweat. 
<laughs> sure. You are the absolute best, you know that, right? A real bro in my time of need. Nay, my knight in sweat-stained armor. Quite. Now, if you would excuse me, princess, I need to collect a fresh towel. Not so fast out the starting gate, you prancy goddamn hoof beast. You're just gonna have to keep dripping until you send me the present. Okay. After all, I don't want this plan to go to shit. Might I ask as to why you are so cross about this? See, when I play a game, I always win. That's just the natural order of things. Therefore, I have to make sure that we keep status quo. As co-leaders of the blue team, we usurp Megiddo, who will have usurped Captor after going all doki doki on his ass. I understand the plan just as well as the first time we discussed it. Wonderful! And you're still in favor of the plan, right? Yes. You're not going to pull a double crossing on me, are you? No. No betrayals? Obviously. No. Muscle beast play? <laughs> of course not. As much as it behooves me to make such reckless statements denouncing my particularly strong interest in muscle beasts, there is no sentiment of the sort. Excellent. I guess I'll see you soon then. Goodbye. This reassuring statement, of course, would turn out to be a lie. As is common between midbloods, this alliance was merely a cover-up for even more conniving by the hair of Void. Unfortunately for the thief, her understanding of this would come too little to late. This is a recurring theme in her story, which is to say that hers is one we will immediately go into, as describing her suffering is something that both myself and the entirety of Paradox Space can find pleasure in. Several years ago, still on the planet we've grown attached to, a young thief of light was enthusiastically playing a game with the Page of Breath. This game was famous for its propensity in leading many to their deaths, particularly to those of low bloods. Luckily for our page, his demise would not be fatal, as his only loss would be of his ability to walk. I just wanted to play Fiddle's Spawn. From here, the Seer of Mind and the Maid of Time would regroup and hatch a plan to take out the new menace found in the thief. To paraphrase, shit got real. And real it would be. Our maid was well acquainted with the spirits of the long deceased and was fully willing to torture her former friend as part of avenging the page. The thief would not take this gesture lightly and would proceed to blow her the fuck up. Follow? Upon realizing that both of her friends were out for the count, our seal would come to a last hope for revenge. And well, I'd say that it was most certainly effective. Terezi, resort to last hope. Hey, white Hex guy. You rang. I need your help. Your apprentice has gone rogue, so I want you to kick her shit in. Why would I do anything of that sort? Violence is not my forte. Yeah, maybe, but you won't be saying that after you read what I have to type. Oh? What could you possibly type that could lead me to beating the shit out of my own apprentice? Not that I don't know already. You don't, because if you did, you'd already be flipping the fuck out. Are you doubting my near omnipotence? Vriska has your magic cue ball. You're joking, right? Uh... I think I'll just let you handle this on your own. This is... This is a joke. It has to be. How could it not be? This... Is that why I keep losing at chess? No. This can't be! She isn't supposed to! Hey, can you go freak out somewhere else? <laughs> Dear, I'd rather you not have to see this next part. See, the thief was famous for her title, and appropriately had something of mine that I just couldn't handle her having. Or better yet, she couldn't handle possessing. As such, I proceeded to blow her to alternian hell. Her misery would luckily not end here. 
The rest of her time before the game would be spent having an endless streak of bad luck, culminating in the death of her losers, the failure of her plan to usurp the maid, and her ultimately having to crawl back to the Night of Blood. Vriska, beg for forgiveness. Ugh. Oh, look who came back like the sad Vriska she is. Shut up, Carcat. Just let me join your stupid team. Oh, God. This is gold. You're actually begging me to do the thing you told me not to even think about previously. Can it. Who do I have to bring into this shitty game? Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. I'm not done enjoying every second of this. Well, can you let me know when you're done? Because I'm not exactly in the mood for dealing with your shit. I'm covered in the blood of my Lucis, and I'm trying to not lose my shit over the fact that the one person I thought I could trust turned his fucking back on me. Wow. Fuck, that really sucks. Oh, really? Tell me about it. Anyway, if you're serious about needing a team to join, I guess we can let you in. Thanks, I guess. There's only one catch. You have to be the one to bring in Tavros. I'm not playing this game. Oh, come on! You don't understand. I hate that guy! I am not putting myself through dealing with his wimpiness! You're all out of options! And if you don't play this game, I'm pretty sure you're going to get killed by meteors. Ugh. You know, maybe if you hadn't pissed off Solix or whoever, you wouldn't be in this scenario. But what's a Vriska? Always a Vriska, I guess. Always doing whatever you can to piss off literally everyone. Terezi. What? I'm flushed for you. What the shit? Carcat, are you okay? Absolutely not. I'm plagued with thoughts of being with you and all that junk. And now, I need your bulge to fill my nook. How many holes did that explosion put in your think pan? Because you're not even typing in your quirk. And you're typing in Vriska's. Wait, Vriska, is that you? Of course it's not Vriska! Do you think Vriska would pull something this low? Yes, actually. Well, Vriska has nothing to do with this. This is Carcat. The one who is flushed red over you, that is me. I'm Carcat. Carcat is I. <laughs> See? Carcat, you're scaring me. Terezi, listen. I know you don't really think much of me. In fact, you'd be pretty justified in thinking that I'm a super lame chump. But I still really like you. There isn't a moment where I don't obsess over you. And I guess what I'm trying to say is... I really want you to suck my bone bulge! Uh... No! Fuck no! That is it! Get out of my head! Like hell I will! This is what you get, Carcat. So why don't you accept your fate and get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! <sighs> I should have known it was you, Vriska. Damn it! Whatever. This chump is yours now. Ugh. Fuck! I have the biggest headache right now. Hey, Carcat. What? Do you really feel that way about me? Uh, kinda, I guess. Not to whatever fucked extent that maniac was trying to imply, but I think you're cool. You do? Yeah. Thanks. Anyway, I'm going to go back to kicking her teeth in, so carry on with waking your loosest or whatever shit you were doing before. Okay, bye. As a result of this switching of teams, a solid chain would form. Two chains, one of red and one of blue, would make up the Alternian session. Despite premonitions that the setup would lead to two separate sessions, in reality, the Alternian one was always meant to be whole. How? Well, Paradox Space always has a plan. The Mobius Double Reach Around. With this, the chains would be fully connected and the game would be fully entered. But we are not quite ready for that, as there is one other loose end we must tie up. Is this the Soulbot? Yes. You didn't do something awful like make it a sex bot, did you? I will neither confirm nor deny that. Whatever. 
How does it feel? Sai, I should have expected this. Congratulations. The first emotion I felt after this law is disappointment. Now stand still for the next 60 seconds while I proceed to emote. Uh, uh, the formerly dead maid would find new life inside of the robot made by the air. And with that, our journey is almost complete. Hey. Hmm? Oh, it's you. Let me guess. You want a second chance? Uh, yeah. All right. I suppose that I will give you one more shot. But... Whatever you do, do not fuck up! Alright, so with the Mobius double reach around, our new heroes find themselves racing against the clock to enter the medium. One after the other, they all manage to escape instant death. However, with our bispectacled friend made previously out for the camp, his time is limited. And given the fact the aquatic Eris' Lucis is a demon monster who screeches psychic waves that can wipe out the entirety of Trollkind with a single vast glob, it is certain to say, as previously mentioned, he gets swiftly killed off. Damn, it is real important that I talk to Kari. He isn't responding. Where is he? Do you know her? Come on, Gam, I know what you know her. Don't tell me you don't. And now that you know that I know what you know, you should tell him to answer me. What? I couldn't be any clearer, you idiot! Well, why am I being reduced to this? How one to can worse with a brain dead chucklefish lacking fins? I think I get what it is you're all up and motherfucking saying. But Carcat's busy with a new bro, who's best known for casual bloodshed and unmotherfucking necessary violence. Don't understand how the black motherfucker can be so chill with hurting other motherfuckers. But Carcat says it's his broship ritual. So he's been all up and poking my best bro with the sharpest of friendliness sticks. Holy shit, is he okay? Uh, yeah, probably. Then why the fuck isn't he answering me? I have a serious problem, and Carl's the only one that can help with such a delicate issue. He's busy, bro. And Salix kind of died. What? How? When? I don't have all the answers. Oh shit, now my typing is all confused. I don't see how. Yours is just alternating fucking letters over what I want. I'm having a fucking aneurysm doing mine, but seriously, this really fucking sucks. I feel ya. But you know what always makes me feel better? Oh god. A healthy combination of praying, spacing out, and slamming a wicked motherfucking elixir of totally non-toxic and nutritious sin cleanser. Okay. No. First of all, praying to some fake-ass religion is fucking stupid magic for little grubs who poop harder than their regular-ass diaper stubs. Secondly, space and will only make you look like a retarded salmon in the middle of the Troll Sahara. Plus, with so many angels and underlings around, I'd be about as safe as a previous simile. And I will not poison myself with your wicked elixirs. How the fuck are you still alive, Gam? Because miracles. Miracles aren't real, Gam! Now why don't you take out that fake hoe you found and kick back and let the sweetness of the messiahs flow through you, easing that tense, tight part of yours. What about the ever-lowing glove hole? Kaka will get back to you when he's supposed to. And that's okay. What the fuck? Huh? How did you know about the Fago? The mirthful messiahs are always watching. It's a miracle. What the fuck? It's the messiahs, man. Fuck your messiahs! Are you fucking stalking me? Man, why would I go out of my way to creep a brother out like that? Stay the fuck away from me, Gam! Alright, fine. You're making me wanna up and go. But I'm already motherfucking here. In your heart. Honk. Fuck. No. The mage's server, our nubby friend, was too busy being preoccupied hatching a plan with his newly acquired blood buddy. What the honk? 
You're a motherfucking mutant blood. So preoccupied that he was able to let his closest friend die. How sad. Tis truly. However, Solix's death would not be for long. Using the ancient ritual of necrophilia- uh, corpse mooching, the Witch of Life would revive the Mage of Doom using his dream self. Through this, the mage was revived. What the fuck happened? Hello there. Hello there. Huh? Remember me? It's nice to meet you. No more voices! No more voices! No more voices! Hey pal, are you okay? Hey buddy, are you alright? Get the fuck out of my head! Oh shit! Uh, do you want some morphine? I think I got some back at the post. <laughs> With entry, our heroes would proceed through their game session, completing many of their quests and ending up with bountiful spoils. However, the session was marked by a particular sequence of events known as Operation Register. This plan, birthed by Karkat and the former Archagent, would exile the Black Queen of Durst and usurp her power, presumably for said Archagent. But alongside this plan, another plan took form. One led directly by the Black Queen herself, and a very willing seer of mind. Rada rada. Through Terezi, the Black Queen was able to exile the Archagent and successfully create a power vacuum, one that would lead to a victory for the trolls. Well, not exactly. <sighs> okay. So in case you weren't aware, we are fucked. Not that any of you are reading this memo, because, uh, I kinda made too many of these. And I guess left a bad impression with you all. I still don't completely get it. But if anyone is reading this, as unlikely as that is, then you should at least know that this game was a complete waste of time. Not that we actually had a say in the matter of whether or not we played it, since obviously Paradox Space is a fickle, self-fulfilling bitch. The truth is, our game ends in failure. Not because of our own stupidity, although we certainly had a lot of it heading in. But because... I guess we thought it was over. I took too long to accept our victory. And, well... I'm going to be honest, we were fucked from the start. This game will, did, and is always going to send stuff at us to bend us over and perform a cavity search like it's stuffing a gobble beast for 11th perigee night. On second thought, I may recognize where the bad impression came from, but my point is, unlike the game, I guess I actually have a point. So, I don't know, if there's anyone reading this, Anyone at all? I'm sorry. I guess I'm going to lie down now or something. On the steel floor of this frigid meteor drifting through the black uncaring void of our Knoll session. Knoll kind of liked this memo, I guess. So, bye. Hello. You can talk about it with me if you want. I don't exactly have anything better to do. Oh, hey. I haven't talked to you in forever. Oh, that doesn't sound very reassuring. Yeah, you kinda just fucked off to your own secretive escapade. I was gonna ask about that, but I guess now I can. Unless you don't actually know why you went yet. Or haven't gone yet? Fuck, this temporal shit is giving me a headache. I haven't really put much thought into meeting up with anyone. Though, neither have I considered isolation. Honestly, it's a frightening thought, but I'd rather not dwell into that subject. Nah, you're fine. It's not like anyone else is reading this. And even if they did, it's not like they'd give enough of a shit to respond. I don't know whether that's reassuring or just a bit disheartening. But in that case, I guess. Karkat, have you ever watched someone you love move on to bigger and better things? I uh, can't say that I have. Then again, you're probably just asking the wrong person. I guess I just feel left behind then. Well, if it's any consolation, you're talking to me now. Even if that means you'll be alone for, like, the next 600 hours. But hey, you're still alive, I think. At least, you look alive. 
You're even talking to people, actually. What about? Uh, I can't really make it out. But hey, at least you're not alone. I guess that's a slight relief. Though, to know that it'll take around 600 hours to get there mostly invalidates said relief. I don't know. Maybe I just need some time to figure all of this out. Whoa, wait. What the hell are you doing? Preparing to think this through? No, not you. This you! I believe that I am this me. Last time I checked, I'm this me. Am I mistaken? No, I mean you as in present you. As in future you. The, the you right here holding a fucking chainsaw and... Oh dear God. What? Fuck. Passed out. Hello? What the fuck is wrong with you? Um, not sure. Mainly relationship problems, I guess. No, I mean, fuck, whatever. Go isolate yourself for a bit or something. It might help you with whatever fuck things are happening in your future self's think pan. And keep that chainsaw of yours away from me, you freak. Okay, sure. I guess this will be it, then. I'll see you. In 600 hours, apparently. Huh. Looks like she fanned him. Alright. You know the drill. Make it pay. Well, color me impressed. How's about you skip to the end? Aradia, skip to the end. Hello. If you are reading this, 
then you know what happened, and you have always known what was to happen. But for the sake of logging it down, I will go through what I believe to be the most important events leading to our inevitable undoing. Because I am bored, and because everyone here is flipping the fuck out, boring me even more. We went into direct conflict with the Black King, and through both a massive amount of skill and a sheer amount of luck, we managed to only barely defeat him. But it was upon attempting to retrieve our ultimate prize that we paid the price for failure. A rift in Paradox space unleashed a demon, one that would prove too difficult to defeat and would kill all but one of us. But that's okay, because I am the one that survived. That's right, eat it other news. The few of us that survived, obviously the ones that weren't Aradia bots that weren't me, they are now tucked into a meteor deep in the veil, hiding for dear life. But that's okay, because I am okay with this, and have been. Mainly because it was all pointless anyway. All of the fights, and all of the bloodshed, was for not. Every bit of turmoil, and every bit of conflict resolution, was nothing more than one cruel joke, staged by Paradox Space itself. It's funny, really. I don't even remember why I kicked the shit out of Vriska, even though it was not more than a few hours ago. I guess it doesn't really matter, as it felt good. Breaking things always feels good. But now, we wait. If not for our inevitable deaths, then maybe, if only by a slight chance, that the universe that we created can hopefully provide us with the help that we need. <laughs>